Antimicrobial resistance is a global health issue that threatens the foundation of modern medicine. Based at the University of Oxford, the INEOS Oxford Institute for Antimicrobial Research is developing new antibiotics and collaborating with international governments to address this crisis. In 1938, it was here that work to isolate and purify penicillin began. The game-changing antibiotic that has gone on to save countless lives around the world. Today, this building is home to the INEOS Oxford Institute for Antimicrobial Research, where a new generation of antibiotics is being developed to tackle the global health crisis that is antimicrobial resistance. So Ernest Chain was one of three scientists that characterised benzoyl penicillin in the back of the 1930s and the early 1940s. And now, in the very same building, scientists are studying how bacteria has evolved to become resistant to antibiotics and developing new antibiotics to tackle antimicrobial resistance or AMR. AMR in about a few decades time will outstrip cancer, will outstrip heart disease, will outstrip um, malaria, HIV, etc. You know, and so if we don't start waking up soon, you know, we're going to be in a very difficult spot. What we now regard as a mild illness, so for example, for example something like a urinary tract infection or a skin infection or perhaps an ear infection, will go from being mild infections to moderate to severe infections. Set up in 2021, thanks to a £100 million donation from INEOS, the INEOS Oxford Institute is working to prevent the unthinkable becoming the inevitable. Number one is to try and develop new antibiotics that overcomes the current resistance that we see in the bacteria. What we don't want to do is to be able to use drugs in animals that will then confer cross-resistance to the drugs that we use in humans. So understanding the complexity of that is also important. We collect um, isolates across South Asia and Africa and we bring them into Oxford to understand the burden of and not just a clinical burden and the morbidity, but also the economic burden. If you look at just the history of antibiotics, they only, they only arrived at the beginning of the Second World War. Um, we became, and there was a very prolific period of research and innovation during sort of 1940 and 1990 when we came up with you know the 30 classes of new antibiotics. There really haven't been. It's a bit, any innovation for the last 30 years. And that lack of innovation has far-reaching consequences for patients and clinicians. Recently, we um, heard of a case where a patient had five courses of different antibiotics, um, but it was only the fifth antibiotic that actually cleared the person's infection. We're already seeing, um, on a week-to-week -week basis, patients that have infections that are extremely difficult to treat. And we also have to use more invasive procedures. We have to administer injections, which requires staff to be have more qualifications. Um, so yes, capacity is a real issue. But in some parts of the world, time's already run out. I could take you to, for example, a, a baby unit in Lahore, and the bacteria that we isolate from the baby will be resistant, 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 resistant. So therefore we've run out of drugs, effective, appropriate antibodies to treat. And without prompt action, the UK will soon be heading the same way. We're only going to achieve progress through collaborative working. We know, for example, that in England in 2022, more than 58,000 people had antibiotic resistant infections. And out of those, 2,202 of them died. We're the first country to introduce a subscription model, which incentivizes pharmaceutical companies to invest in antibiotic development and research. So for us, that is one of our ways in which we're innovating and encouraging more innovation across the world. It has been proven historically that if you take the best of the commercial organisation, the best of the resource organisation, and you get government involved in that dialogue as well, so they are supportive, that you know, remarkable things can happen. And here at the INEOS Oxford Institute, that collaborative ethos is starting to deliver.
We have a series of compounds that we've developed in, in Oxford that are actually unique. This is the work that the IOI is pioneering. It's a very long road, but we're very hopeful that some of the compound series that we have will be effective and uh, cost-effective. Signs of encouragement amid a global crisis where time is fast running out.